Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Monday, August 6, 2018. This is an end-of-day market wrap as we head into the final minutes of trading. It's uh, just turned 3.53 Eastern Time, so about seven minutes ago. Um, I don't expect any fireworks today into a close, um, being as, as lackluster as today's trading action and, and volume and everything was, so we'll just do the video here. Uh, SPY 60-minute chart we're going to start out with. Um, not much has happened really since last week. I just wanted to do an update, uh, show you where things, what, what has occurred um, that I haven't covered yet at least not in the videos. Uh, and that would be this uh, extension of the previous divergent high. So last week we were looking at this divergent high we had in SPY, we had a little bit of a pullback, we had a, a deeper correction in QQQ in the NASDAQ 100. Uh, SPY held up relatively well compared to the Qs. Most of that was due to the big FANG stocks going down. But uh, uh, so since then we had that divergence right there at this point and right here. And now we've pushed up to a marginal new high. So uh, what I'm trying to get at here, my convictions aren't very strong, whether we continue higher, whether the correction's over. But I have to say this, I, we were last week pushing the upper ends of my, my you know, what I think was a logical bounce target uh, if we are going to see another leg down. Um, and even though we've moved up a little today, we're up about a third of percent, not much in the uh, in SPY. Um, but the, the case that this may be uh, a counter trend rally with another leg down to come can still be made. SPY is close to all time highs. We have those highs back from early January. I'll get to the daily charts in a second. You can't see it here. This is just a 60 minute chart going back into May. But, uh, uh, you know, my guess, we're so close. I'll tell you what, you know, it, usually when the market gets that close, new highs are like a magnet. So it wouldn't surprise me at least to see us pull us on, uh, see the market pull up there, punch through, take out the previous highs. And then if it does that, as I've mentioned before, and I'll get to in a second, it will be a, uh, a divergent high. Uh, whether or not those divergences will be confirmed and play out for a trend reversal, any new high in the near future, in the next week or two here, uh, is guaranteed to be a divergent high in SPY if it does happen in the S&P 500. And we already have negative divergence on the daily and weekly time frames on uh, the NASDAQ 100. So uh, this is what we're looking at right now. Uh, here's where we're at. So uh, maybe we push up a little more, maybe not. My convictions aren't super high right now. I'll tell you that just from the get-go. But uh, here's what it looks like. That 60 minute chart on SPY I was showing you last week and for the last couple of weeks. So there was that divergent high played out for a very mild correction. And the bigger picture is right now we have this breakout here. Let me go back to this other chart. It was a little more clean. And let's do this. Let's just clean out that level and give you a line right here. Wrong line. Get rid of that one. I'm trying to grab a horizontal line. There it is. So here's uh, this is the level that I'm watching. And now uh, by all accounts, SPY or the S&P 500 should hold it. We had a high here in June. It wasn't the all-time high, but it was a, uh, the high, you know, high end of the range that the SPY has been hitting since uh, that that it peaked out earlier in the year. And then we flirted with it a little bit, took it out with a very unimpressive breakout, but then started to move higher, came in, back tested, back tested again. So at this point, uh, we've had a lot of back tests. Uh, that level should really hold. And if nothing else, it's an important level. So if we fall back below there, and there's also the potential to fall through this minor trend line, that, that would be bearish, if, especially if we reverse this week and these divergences are confirmed. So there it is. Um, that is certainly a potential scenario. Uh, we can even push up a little higher and then go on and do that. But keep an eye on that 279-ish 50 279.50 ish level, we'll call it, especially on a daily closing basis to fall back below there. Here's what it would look like on the daily chart. So you can see um, what I'm referring to here with these boom, two, three, several attempts there, and we finally took it out. And there was that all time high in the S&P 500. So we're so close. And then bigger picture is you have this orange trend line right here. This goes back. Uh, quite a way. This goes back to, let's go here, early 2016. Very well defined trend line. And uh, the SPY has been, and SP, SP 500 as well, has been back testing that trend line from below since it made an impulsive break down here. And we have this minor trend line below it, so that forms that price channel. So there it is. Lots of potential possibilities here. And I don't mean to confuse you, but uh, I look at it this way. I still believe that the risk reward is is not favorable to going long or to even remain long here that's just my opinion 
Um, you know, do what you want. Uh, but I think any breakout to new highs has a, a, a sharply increased rate of failure. That's been my experience. Breakouts to new highs with negative divergence often fail. It's not a guarantee. Uh, you wait to see some some you know trend lines break like this one down here. Uh, that would certainly be a sell signal. So there it is. That's the scenario. Any upside in SPY, I believe, is minimal. And if we do reverse, that will confirm that uh, bearish divergence right there. Uh, and the bullish case, you just power on through these divergences. Just come on up, take out these previous highs, take this high out with conviction, especially see a lot of volume come in, and not just a little limp above there and then reverse. That would be the bullish case on SPY. And anything is possible. And we would look at the weekly chart on SPY, same story. Um, this is your bull market trend line off the 2009 lows, this white one. And there's that yellow trend line. It's the same one I just showed you. I think it was blue on the other chart off the 2016 lows. Back testing that one from below while holding on to the primary bull market uptrend line, but not a lot of room uh, on the downside. If something happened and things got ugly, uh, that trend line only lies about... Uh, Wow, 3% or so below current levels. And there's the weekly chart. And this would be the first negative divergence on the weekly time frame right here if it's confirmed. And it would be, it's guaranteed to be confirmed or at least to be in place if the SPY punches through here anytime soon, the next few weeks. But uh, the last time we had divergence was back here. And that was the biggest drop uh, throughout this bull market. Uh, we had a, almost a bear market in SPY. We had a bear market in the small caps. Uh, I think the NASDAQ composite hit that 20% threshold. And at the very least, you know, the broad markets traded sideways for, you know, over a year, almost, you know, a year and a half of grinding around sideways after two big sharp corrections. And again, although it's not drawn out here, that was uh, with the divergence around this point here. So there's there's your divergence lines. So nope. here we go. There and there. QQQ weekly chart uh, that spans the entire bull market, 10-year uh, chart here. Uh, every single divergence marked here without fail. All double digits, but this little tiny, little baby divergent high right there, if you want to count that. I tried to be accurate and count them all. 4% drop. Every other one was measured well into the double digits. Uh, we had a tiny little divergent high right here back on the week ending March 16th. That was good for a 12% correction, and all we've done since then is wedged, continue to wedge up. These divergences are still not confirmed because the PPO is a momentum indicator. It shows you the momentum is still up. Uh, it's starting to roll down a little bit, but it hasn't made a bearish cross. This would be confirmed divergence to see a, a lower high, uh, meaning below this high right there. Uh, so right now we have what I call potential divergence, and again, the proximity to the primary uptrend line, or at least the uptrend line off the early uh, the mid 2016 2015 lows right here well-defined prime uh, trend line is really good and i know the momentum is solid right now it's not very strong but it's an upward grind the market refuses to go down and maybe continues to grind up like this for months on end very possible but uh, again we're in very close proximity so any bad news could really rattle the markets and, and break that down and give us a technical breakdown. The first break of this trend line, and again, a weekly close. You have to see them both. I need to see that trend line I just showed you on SPY go on a weekly closing basis or very impulsive intraweek. Uh, I don't have to wait for a weekly close if it's you know well below that trend line. Uh, and I'd want to see them both, QQQ and SPY, take out those uh, primary trend lines there. And until then, like I said, it's a slow grind up, and we just trade off these 60-minute charts. Um, that's all long-term, that weekly chart, that's long-term long -term investing stuff, trend trading stuff. Um, this is the swing traders' time frame, these 60-minute charts where we can uh, trade these uh, rips and dips, the divergent highs and lows, and um, you know, even whether we're in an uptrend or downtrend line. Uh, I'm sorry, an uptrend or a downtrend. You can trade those 60-minute divergence. Usually good for trade lasting at least several days, usually several weeks or more. Last week, I, I highlighted the Fibonacci retracement levels. SPY has already moved just above its high, as I just showed you, so we're a little bit over a full retracement on SPY. But this is QQQ, and what I'm referring to are the recent highs back on the 26th. Looks like down to the 30th. 
uh, that low. These are Fibonacci retracement levels, the 38.2, 50%, 61.8. And I did add the 78.6. I mentioned that being another Fib retracement level that wasn't turned on on my chart at the time. And you can see that's where we stopped today. In fact, we hit it earlier in the session. As I zoom in here, you can see that's where we hit and pulled back, hit it again, hit it again. These are 60 minute candles and so far failed to take that level out. So again, I'm like I said, my convictions aren't very strong, but I cannot write off the possibility that um, this was, or so far, uh, the initial leg down with the counter trend bounce and more to come, which may take out that recent low. And probably, if it does, it'll probably come in towards the low, where the these lows were on this little basing period right here, where the market's consolidated back in late June, early July. Uh, that would be a logical target. And I think I've already laid those potential targets out. Yeah, that's T3. And let's just look at the futures charts and we'll wrap it up here. Uh, this one is NQ. So what happened again, uh, and this is a you know wash, rinse, repeat thing. I'll circle the divergent highs. This was a divergent high, and I'm referring to negative divergence on the RSI and PPO. We had a divergent low right there. Uh, divergent high right here. Little one there, little one there with a little correction you can see there. And then that went on to extend and we had a bigger correction. So here it is. Divergent high is a sell signal, not a sell signal. I'm sorry. The sell signal came on the breakdown and back test. We also had a concurrent breakdown on SPY. Put in a divergent low that set the stage for this rally. We put in a divergent high right here uh, and that set the stage for this correction. Uh, and the sell signal came on the break of that trend line. So now uh, most recently, we put in a divergent low right here on the 60 minute time frame. It wasn't very big, but it doesn't take a lot in a, in a primary uptrend to trigger a pretty good rally. So we had that. And it wasn't just, you know, random level. It happened to come in right where my preferred swing target was there. Uh, that was the top of that trading range. There was a swing target zone and we reversed. And now again, is the is are we heading to new highs i at this point i'll tell you what we have once again negative divergence it's not confirmed but it's certainly there we have the potential if we reverse in the next day or two what i mean by that the potential well if we continue on up this is the ppo right here this is pointing higher this is a momentum indicator rsi is as well um uh, the relative strength indicator and that's point they're both pointing up so they need to turn down and ideally i like to see a bearish cross on the ppo and that has to occur at or below the previous high right there. So we have room to go up a little more and keep these divergences intact, uh, or we could reverse any time now. If we do, keep an eye out for things. Will the selling be impulsive? Uh, how do these all these levels that are support levels, how do they act on the way down? Do we break through them? I can tell you this would be, if we do get a pullback soon, this is a, looks like a pretty good level right about here. I see a lot of reactions along that line. This should contain any pullbacks uh, for the bullish scenario. If it doesn't, hmm, things are probably going to get ugly, and I think we'll make a run at those lows back here. Uh, all right, and a lot of blurry lines there. So that was NQ, and did I cover ES? I think I did. It's been a long day. Let me cover ES real quick. Uh, so ES, like SPY, we had a divergent high right here. That divergence started to play out for a more muted correction than the S&P 500. Like NQ, um, I should say more muted correction than the NASDAQ 100. So like NQ, we had a small divergent low right there. See the bullish divergence right here and here. And that led to a little bounce. And then we uh, we'll click on another tool. We got a little bounce, went down, made another low, which was also once again a larger uh, extension of those existing divergences. And that led to this pop here. Okay, so we all know what happened there. Uh, there's the pop, but what happened since that previous divergent high, we extended the divergence line. So now, uh, here, the easier way for me to show it to you is down here. This is where the divergence was at that point on ES. Little correction. Was this the first leg down with another divergent high and more to come? That's the big question. We're probably going to know this week. There's not a lot of room if we go up much higher 
And like I said, the S&P 500 is so close to those all-time highs from January, it's probably going to make a run at them. That could pop through these divergences. And divergences aren't be-all, end-all. Let me just say that. If we take out these divergences, that doesn't mean that we're just off to the races and we're going up another 10 20%. Uh, but it would keep that bearish case alive and intact for now, and that still is. So there it is. Um, and honestly, my convictions aren't super strong, so I'm just going to sit back and wait my guess if i had to guess we pop above there in the next day or two take out the highs on the s p and then maybe pull back because that'll be a divergent high but i'm open to anything we'll see what happens tomorrow and earnings season by the way is wrapping up this week there's i think i forget 20 something it's a much smaller number of the s p 500 components reporting so we're, we're really tapering off right now which is a good thing because now we can get back to focusing on individual trade ideas i've had a lot of setups in the last few weeks but so many were scheduled to report earnings I didn't want to add those on as official trade ideas. So I have my watch list ready to go, uh, considering some additional trade ideas um, on the site and uh, also looking at some commodities as well. Commodities are nice because you don't have to worry about earnings. All right, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. I hope you enjoyed it.